Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Academy. Welcome to the 2017-2018 Teacher Workshop Series. Today we're working on number 41 on the new General Curriculum Math Subtest. And this problem here involves interpreting a box plot. Now you'll see the box plot below. Let's just take a real quick moment and go through the basics of how to interpret a box plot. You see these all the time on the different teacher certification exams. So it's good to have a basic working understanding of how to read these. You'll notice that there are two points at either end. This one right here represents the minimum data point. And this one here represents the maximum data point. So our lowest data point in this data set is $70,000. And our highest data point in this data set is $180,000. Make sure you see that right away. This part right here of a box plot represents the median number. So you could say here, this is 110,000. Half the data points are above 110,000, and half of them are under 110,000. Box plots organize data in four sections. We got section one, the first, second, third, fourth. And each one of these sections is called a quartile, and it represents 25% of the data points. The first quartile are all the data points in here, and they represent 25% of our data set, all right? And, if, and it, it ends, the first quartile ends where the rectangle begins. So that's this right here. And that looks like it's between 90 and 100. So let's call that 95,000. That means in our, first, in our first section right here, 25% of the data points are less than or equal to 95,000. Okay, now let's just use this as a, as a working base to read this problem, all right? Now that we got a little bit of the math, let's, let's start by reading it over. It says here, use the box plot below to answer the question that follows. And we're given a box plot involving advertised prices of two acre parcels. This is the data that we're gonna be looking at here. And it tells us, you know, that this is this box plot organizes the information in thousands of dollars. So our minimum parcel of land sold for 70,000, our maximum parcel of land sold for 180,000, our median or middle number sold for 110,000. And then it says a little bit more, the box plot above represents the advertised prices in thousands of dollars of two acre parcels of land in a particular country. Based on the box plot, which of the following statements is true? Now let's evaluate A, B, C, and D. Normally, team, when you, if you see something like this, the first thing you want to do is read the question and make sure you can identify um, the minimum, the maximum, the medium number, and have an understanding of um, first, second, third, and fourth quartiles. Okay? Let's read, read over and evaluate. We're looking for a true statement here, which means the other ones are either not true or we can't confirm. For example, with A, A says the mean price of a parcel is 110000 now, if we go back to our problem here, 110,000 didn't match up with the mean. It matched up with the median price, the middle number. So in, in box plots, you really can't tell the average price. There's not enough information in our data set to help us get to the average price. All we can tell with a box plot based on the visual diagram here is where the middle number is. So 110 represents the middle number, not the mean. Now, if A had read the median price of a parcel is $110,000, it would be right. But it doesn't say that, so for that reason, cross it out. Let's go to B. B says, there is only one parcel price at $180,000. Now, look at our diagram. We, in evaluating it, identified $180,000 as our maximum data point. And right now, it's kind of hard to see, but this fourth section here, right, we don't know how those data points are distributed. There could be more than one data point, uh, more than one parcel of land sold for 180,000. So for that reason right there, since there could be more than one data point in that last quartile, we cross it out. Let's look at C. More than half the parcels are priced higher than 110,000. Now 110,000 in our diagram, again, is our median, our middle number, which means if we think about it, 50% and exactly 50% are greater than the median and 50% are less than the median. 
So there can't be more than 50% or more than half. It's, it is exactly half or greater and half or less than the median. So for that reason, C is out. Now let's look at D. D says, if the data represent 50 parcels, I think there's a little typo there, um, then at least 12 of them are priced at or below 95000 Now there's two things here. There's three things here. First is, is this inf new information they're throwing in, 50 parcels. What does that mean? Well, what they're trying to say is that if they sold 50 parcels of land, that, that represents 100% of the parcels of land in our data set, right? Then there's at least 12 parcels in this range that are priced at or below 95000 Now, what does that mean, at or below 95000 Is that 95000 a random number? It's actually not team. If you look very closely at our first quartile, the first 25% of the data points fall from 70,000 to this point right here, 95,000. Now what does that mean? That means that 25% of the data points are falling in this first section between 70,000 and 95,000. Now 25% of 50? Well, that's team, that is approximately 12. That means there's going to be at least 12 data points, 12 parcels of land that fall in this first section that are less than or equal to 95,000. This is a tricky problem, team. It's hard to uh, visualize breaking up the 50 into these different chunks. It would have been a lot easier if they said there was 100 parcels of land. Then it would have been a lot more visually easier to be like, hey, if there's 100 parcels of land, each one of them, each one of these is 25, 25, 25, 25. You know, that would have been an easy one to do. So they had to throw in a 50, making it a little harder to see that 12 represents the first 25, approximately the first 25 data points in that first quartile. All right? All right, so team, D is the answer. Go back, team. And review the basics, maximum, minimum, medium values, just by looking at the box plot and being able to identify values that fall in the first section, the second, third, and fourth section. That will help you on problems like this. All right, team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Academy. Hope you enjoyed this problem. Have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye. Team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Academy. Welcome to the 2017-2018 Teacher Workshop Series. This year we're holding workshops in math, science, English and history, early childhood education, foundations of reading, ESL and SEI. These are hands-on workshops designed to help teachers pass their teacher certification exams. I encourage you to check them out. We're holding them in Massachusetts, New York, North Carolina, California, New Hampshire, Vermont, Connecticut, and a couple other states. I encourage you to check out an upcoming workshop. I'm sure you'll find them very helpful. Take care.